to sound all nice and cool and everything. They're crickets. But that's not what we want to be. Crickets ain't the thing we need to be. We need to be responsive. We can't make excuses. I keep saying this every week. I know it's about it sounds like a broken record. Better than the better than not better than what uh, Grimner does before the broadcast here every Sunday. Hours and hours of rock and the blues. And so none of you will understand that any other time you hear this. Uh, that's why you need to show up on Sundays live. Uh, Real Liberty Media, and you could listen to that if you have no other place to. Uh, wherever we post this podcast, blogcast, whatever it is you want to call it, the file that you hear this on, wherever it's showing up, you can also go live at rlmradio.xyz or go to the Real Liberty Media website, real, reallibertymedia.com. And I'm only repeating all this because we're getting the shakeups in the networks and Wherever you might find this, this originates from some place, and it does this every week. And there's a whole lot of lot of more files in the archive. And so this is, as I said last week, you can't listen to me for a few minutes. You can't listen to me for even uh, an hour, not even two hours. I have to go through a whole lot of subject matter. I do that because I don't know what might interest anybody. And I don't uh, get too much feedback on a lot of this, so I just continue and been doing this for many, many years. And as I go through the notice to us that we call, most people think it's the news, I can take those subject matters and explain to you, if you want to do something about it, we don't, we aren't helpless anymore. And that pretty much takes away all, even our excuses, even just to talk. Yes, we should be talking, but we should be actually doing something with what our, our talk is and put that into action. Because the talk is, no, is nothing, really strategizing, getting things worked out, working out differences between us so that we can see where we need to go is really what I, I work on every day uh, when I'm not doing the broadcast or preparing for it, and even my thoughts are in that when I'm doing the broad, setting up for my broadcast, which you hear today. At, uh, this episode, the episode, will be BTWRLM276. For those of you that want to find the broadcaster content after the fact, I'll give you all the links that I go through. Uh, those links of which I had to, I had over 300 tabs that I don't, of information I never get to. <laughs> and to, uh, it was causing trouble that I had to uh, offload them. So a lot of information I don't even get to. A lot of things that would all tie together, tie more things together. Again, this whole thing that I see in the whole wor- thing of the world is one big thing. One big thing. And it's all coming through at different levels in different ways. And so it's not hard to find the wrongs. It's what are you going to do about it? And that's what I started to notice. What are we going to do about it? We're in the face of a global occupation, right where we are, wherever we are. And it comes at us by all kinds of different means, and we just complain about it or don't do, don't don't even, I find nobody knows what to, nobody knows what to do about it. You and my colleagues, we have to work it out, how to work out how we address these problems. And so it's not uh, so simple at some level. And, but it is that simple. It's as simple as you deciding which wrong you want to make right and go and tackle that. I just, without getting too deep into it, there's a road modification near me. People don't even know how to deal with it. I, I didn't. I didn't want to get engaged. I got too much to other things to do. But once I found out someone ex, expounded on a problem that they had after the fact, I went. I realized that the plan was working. Their, our problem was their plan. And it took me five minutes to find the source of that problem for the one who didn't understand why they were all, all of a sudden having a trouble. And the road the road was put in in a particular way to do a certain thing and immediately started to see that outcome. And I was able to track that, that road plan down into a federal project. It, it took me five minutes. Fifteen minutes to look at some of the basics to see how, to, how that thing should have been attacked. Had people been aware of the things I talk about every week here, they would have been able to address that fairly rapidly and at least put a resistance to it. Not to say that roads and things like that are a bad thing to improve. They, they, if there's an ability to improve them, but why not? But they come within attachments. And they're attachments that you won't really see until 20 years down the road. And you wonder why you're, why all of a sudden it's so difficult, so dangerous, or things aren't working so smooth, it costs so much. And we work in, we're working 20 years behind the times always. And I've come behind the woodshed to try and give you the principles so you can look forward into the future and stop the nonsense. 
And at any rate, so this is what I, I tend to try and do. And I don't know how successful I've been. I have been a little bit successful. I can also know that there's a success in the way I see people addressing their statements and how they speak. So I know I'm making some influence. But I, it's not just making an influence in talking and seeing people respond in, in the re- regard of just responding. They have to go act. They have to take this stuff and put it in practice. And what's not being put in practice in one regard, uh, the censorship-free network, it's going to bite the, bite the dust. I think it's tomorrow or the next day. I forgot to talk to you about it last week, but at some point, it doesn't really matter. Freedomsnetwork.com, it's going dark, uh, going to bite the dust in a day or two, maybe tomorrow night, but tomorrow afternoon. I don't, I don't remember now the time. So if any of you wanted to continue that network, it's a censorship-free network, wide open, ready to go, a place for you all to come together to start working out how you're going to beat down the, the occupation around you. Uh, that that the servers need donations. I guess it's a PayPal me dot freedom uh, slash freedom network if you want to. Otherwise, it is going down. There's no no uh, saving that that another forum going down. And this is the and it just my, from my view, it's just an ob, the object of the microcosm. I keep pointing out to you all. If we can't keep a, a censorship free networks out open and use them as tools. The odds of us getting through this are really getting slim. There's only a, really the few I look out and see that are truly dedicated have committed themselves. They don't make an excuse for the commitment of their, uh, the object of their uh, ire, if I can say that, that dr- drives them into saying, I'm going to stop it. And when anybody has done that, I've seen that they can start, they begin the, the, this process to set the foundation, then to go on and begin to turn the tide. And we went to the mining me- district meeting here this last Friday. We we're able to point out where that's happening where the work of our district is having an immense influence on what's going on, whether it be uh, road closures, whether it be firefighting. We're now seeing a big change happened over over firefighting all of a sudden as, as, as the states, the, the western state starts to turn, burn up because it's uh, been mismanaged on its timber side uh, on the management of the public lands. We are now being influential. We've been influential in changing how they fight fire and policy, and it's a slow change. That would have never happened had a few guys hadn't stood up and started doing that. Now, I don't. We're never going to get any credit for this, and that's okay. And that's one of the other things. You just got to kick. You got to step back and take your ego out of this. This is not about us, but us getting credit. It'd be nice, but it's not what, why I'm. It's not why I get involved. Any of the guys I get involved with aren't, aren't doing it for that. It ends up coming down to the people's property aren't taken, their roads aren't being closed, the fires are a little bit less, or they're being fought a lot of it quicker. I don't know if you appreciate uh, when you, if you heard or didn't, there was a suppression order came down through the BLS Secretary of Interior, not the BLM, the Secretary of Interior. What do you think that? Where do you think that though the impetus for that started? It finally it came out quickly as a rule, and they're now using utilizing those techniques to, this year on these fires already. Completely, you can hear it completely different fi- uh, when the fire happened. What happened? So, what have I been saying? But you just got to get involved. You don't want the your you don't want your your land to burn up to mismanagement, forest mismanagement. You're gonna have to find out how they're doing it wrong, what they're utilizing to be able to justify doing it wrong, and you're gonna have to stop it. You bring the bet, what they call it, even in the process, you call it, you bring the better alternative. As I was explaining only summarily about the 1995 national 1999 forest fighting, the forest fire policy. It's the low bar. If you expect better, you're going to have to locally make the high bar. You have to then go to your counties. And so there's a way to do that. And there's a way to bring this law. And there's a way to be the law versus all the uh, contrarians. And uh, one, the law essentially prevails ultimately if you will persist in the proper way. It takes a bit sometimes. Lots of places we're up against attorneys, and it, it takes a bit to beat those guys down off their off their high horse. They're all they're a bunch of criminals, and you can't. And when you get into the dynamic, you can't call them a criminal. You just got to show them how they are, and that means you have to know your stuff better than anybody else around you. And that's just one subject matter. We do it. We touch all kinds of things. In fact, like I said, this meeting we were able to go through. There was about five or six different subject matters that uh, we've been influential in the background over years. 
and we're starting to see the fruits of our labor. So when someone tells me they just want to complain about how bad it is, and I don't hear them wanting to step up and even telling us on their on your own how you're attempting to do a change or asking for assistance or whatever, or some help, there's really no time for me to, to, to listen to that. This I keep telling you, we are the cause of this. We are the self-inflicted wound. We keep allowing it. It's up to us to stop it. Apparently that jump is too big for most everybody. So we come behind the woodshed. I try to give you the principles about all that so we can avoid this terrible future that's been planned for us. And I don't know how we don't have to see that plan. I talk about it every week. What did I talk about last week over in North Carolina? Instead of solving the opioid problem, they're going to go do go into your sewers to see what you, whether or not you've got an addiction. Don't stop the war on drugs. Don't stop the problem from the from the doctors prescribing the drugs from the pharmaceuticals, which is all bottom line control. No, don't do all that. And worse, you don't step up to say don't do all that. You let them. And if you think this is just your North Carolina, some podunk place back in North Carolina with the first one to pop up with it, I tell you, this is a global problem. We find it this week. It's amazing how this all works for, for, for me. If I, if I'm a, if all those 300 tabs that I don't get to you, it's all the news you didn't hear a week before it became the news. It's pretty fascinating. But anyway, I can't get to all of it. China expands surveillance of sewage to police illegal drug use. Is this getting too weird for folks? Last week I tell you that the podunk place in North Carolina is looking at your sewage to stop a stop an opioid problem. It's completely lunatic. And yet that's the function of what China's been doing. Why? Because they don't want to solve the problem. And this is a global plan against us. If you don't want an opioid problem, stop taking them. But the response from government's not to solve it. It's to continue it. It's to make a, a greater surface attack area against any one of you. If you don't think, oh, I don't take them, so I don't care, you wait till they start to screw up these tests. But a big, con con a big country is now going after their opioid problem, sniffing the poop. And you think this is local? Do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's not working? This is a global plan, folks. So here it is. You can go. You can read it all you want. You can type it in the. You, all you, it's all available for us to see if we'll just read it. And I'm telling you to attach it to something and watch out because it's probably coming around to you. These things are solutions. They're not remedies. They're solutions to a plan. They're not what's supposed to be done. Not if you have a say of it. And I can guarantee most of, like you, likely if you looked into a lot of this stuff, you'd start to see what's going on you start to see how they move things through to benefit the government, those in government, actually. This is, I mean, if, if there was a, a uh, if there was a, a claim of, against a long-term office holding, that, that would be it right there. It becomes organized crime. Everybody understands that, but no one wants to step in and stop doing it. So, but it looks like, again, the, the small band of people in the Jefferson Mining District we're doing some influential work behind the scenes. None of the guys that I know of are mining are having trouble with the government. Why? We have a, an understanding about the chasm between the agenda and what law is supposed to be doing. The real function of the government versus what it's turned into, the weapon it's now become. And we'll find the, all, the, the, the heads up about the weapon coming in other nations don't, don't have the protections that the United States of America does, notwithstanding your lack of access to those protections. That's on you. It's on all of us, but it's on you. China is using the same technology as some little podunk place in North Carolina. You tell me whether or not that's a plan. And my problem is, is a lot of people are being hurt by something the government knows they're being hurt by, and there the government is the one that's doing it. And that method, if you just see how that works, is, I think, in about everything that's going on that's wrong right now. It has been wrong for a long time. And in talking about things, in fact, it came up again. A lot, you know, we're looking at a lot of things. We're trying to find lots of, uh, lots of answers and looking for good information. A whole set of information came up, and it was a regurgitation of things that came in the 90s, the stuff that maybe not, didn't work so well. And this is another part of the destruction that we are. We don't go deep enough to find out and verify whether or not what we're being told is valid. What I'm telling you today can be verified as to being valid. 
Any anything I've I've said can be made to be verified. You want to go find out that the 1995 forest policy, national forest policy, is the low bar. Go read it. You want to go see, go find out how how uh, raising that bar changes things. Go look at the rule for suppression changing for the forest fires. And I'm only talking about that because that's uh, we're living in the land of smoke again this year, but they're treating it differently. Now that didn't come from doing nothing. It came from actually getting involved. So keep up. Uh, we see the want, want confirmation that this the, the drug abuse and the war on drugs is going is a global thing that they use and they're going to use it to your disadvantage. Here's it coming right out of China. I told you watch watch China is the leading edge of all this. It's going to be the leading edge of the cashless society that they bring in. How they're going to bring it in. How they're going to transfer the money is over. Uh, they're given. They were given by the w, the, the World Bank. They were given the license to start making these things up. And here, this is no different. This is you're seeing this right here. You know, I said cashless society. They were given the process to to bring on the money system. They were bringing on the utilizing the electronics. I tell you, that's the silent weapons of quiet wars. They give you a phone. They say this is your life, and it will be, and nobody resists it. You're watching the oppression come on you, and you, nobody resists it. Cashless society is a con. Someone else sees it. A big finance is behind it. Uh, that's where the whole point about this article that I'm gonna I'm just gonna mention it to you so you can go check it out. Somebody did the analysis and found out the stakeholders regarding all this are behind the policies that you're having to live under, and it's to their profit, obviously. Special interest organized crime. And and, and part of your you're playing into all this by utilizing the technology and not taking a, a parallel alternative that's better for you. And to me, that would be simply finding the silver-based money, if that's all we could do, at least find the silver-based coin. They call it junk. And they did that for a reason, if you haven't figured that out. That you're not able to get cash underneath this new cashless system. The banks are forcing you out of it. It becomes easier for you. Easier. For you just to go do cashless. Told you that I told you all about this for for a decade now, how this works out. The the is like the, I told you about the legalization of pot. Uh, the big the big companies underneath it. The attorneys are underneath all that. Every just about everything you see, every security you find is the system coming at you. It does this behind the scenes and it profits those that are the stakeholders to it. They use stocking horses in order to promote that. They get the stocking horse is something you get to believe in and you do believe in in order to allow it. So here's the here it again. Your future is being laid out. The electronic connection to the cashless society was handed to to China to do by the World uh, World Bank, and uh, that, that ended up being bricks and all that other stuff. We talked all talked all about it, and here you're finding the the people are people are starting to find it out, but. Here's the point. Who cares if who cares if big business, big finance is is behind it if you continue to use their product or are funneled to use another product they offer you? There's gonna have to be some feet planting here about against the principles that they're running against you and violating in you. You're gonna have to at one point stop walking with it. Stop walking with that ring in your nose. And to do that, you're going to have to be a little bit more aware than, oh, it's the Fed. Oh, it's uh, it, it's it's this law. It's only legal, not law. I've gone through a lot of this. You're going to have to have a better word in your mouth. You're going to have to understand the process that's bringing it. You don't want a, a you don't want your roads improved uh, to the point that they get they work work you out of it to get you on their bikes and, and in their buses. Or, or if you're not, then they get to take higher revenue from you, from all the violations that you're going to be doing and all the taxation you're going to suffer to have the privilege that you that they now claim you're using because of the carbon you're producing in the world, but travel in your own car. If you're going to fight that, you're going to have to have a better understanding of it, of the process and what, what it takes. And I told you they go right to the police powers, and you have to defeat those. They're the toughest ones to do, but they're defeatable because you find out that underneath lying this is a fraud. And so what, I don't know what else to tell you, but that's how this works and hope that you step up and start defending yourselves. So the cashless society is a setup by the system. I've been telling you that. Just like this blockchain. 
And it's amazing to me how many people will will support the blockchain and they aren't listen, apparently not listening to what I've been saying about how dangerous it really is when you get to things of actual title and property. See, outside of that is your mortgage type system where it's just in paper and you see what they did to that in the MERS condition and they destroyed a whole a whole set of uh, bunches of people, made them homeless and took out uh, took out a, a financial system doing all that. All because it was a fiction and everyone bought into it. Didn't do it, didn't do the other way they're supposed to do it, as I've been talking. So I've been given all the tools, I've been given the insight, and I I don't seem I don't I haven't heard many people helping themselves to this insight that would insulate them to some extent. There may not be a way to completely insulate yourself, but you're gonna be insulated a whole lot better than the than those that buy into it all. Because that's the it what they want. They want your buy in. Remember there's all these terms keep coming around. So this cashless society is a con. The fi big finance is behind it. Yeah, we all uh, re re read about it. We know about it. But I'm at telling you and asking you, what are you going to do about it? What are you doing to avoid this disaster that's planned for it? I mean, I can't even fathom the the mentality. The you know, psychopathy, psychopathy is really beyond me. I, I can't get it. How people can just do this without a sense of any any harm that they're doing? They 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 make a plausible well, the, stake, the, the, the stocking horse, they make a plausible reason why it sounds like they need to do it. They put it on you that you need it. And your actions are the one that's leading it. And that's not the case at all. And as I pointed out to, to someone who I was talking about this new, this new road plan, the first complaint was being used. Now they're going to make it even worse on people because there's a complaint about safety. It was supposed to solve safety, but now there's a safety problem. So they're going to solve it. They're going to make it more restrictive. That's a, do you see how neat a trick that is? And this is how why we're watching this whole thing devolve in front of our eyes. And we can, we'll complain about it, but it's beyond us to even. I think that's partly why we don't respond. We're completely clueless, literally clueless as to how that this magic show is happening before us. And we're a captive audience to it. Now, I don't believe that, but I think most people that listen to me might be. And those that don't listen to me were back to the clueless. What are they going to know? What are the clueless ever going to know? And I told you last week, uh, our, our experience, I think me and my colleagues, our experience is people for the most part uh, do not understand the the system at all, period. They don't understand the first thing to do. They don't understand even to look at the most basics of the system, to understand who to contact and why. They'll fight you tooth and nail about how to do that. And then you got the subversives within the group that they don't know are there. We can identify those really quickly, and we treat them a certain way. We it, well, you end up putting the work on them. You don't let you don't let them pull you around like you have a ring in your nose. We don't have time for it essentially. But see, if you're not engaging people to find out about that, they don't even they're useless to themselves, and so they have to educate, be educated to it. And you'll find out real quickly that they, a lot of them don't want to. A few will. And that's the things. That's where we focus. The, my listenership here is not engaging and not knowing that, then you're just part of that group that's not actually functioning, but you're just a complainer. And I'd want to see, I think we're, those of us who listen to me are probably, you know, a better, a better principle than that, I guess is all. I don't even know how to describe it. We're, we're interested and we're, we're, we're affected because we care. But I'm saying we're not caring enough to really figure it out and now to address it. And there may not be a, an example for most of us. There might not be an experience of a success in that because it's so convoluted. And I'm just going to have to be, you're just going to have to take it on faith that when you jump out there and you start doing it the right way or the better way, and you start learning better how to do it better, things start to change. And I'm, I said earlier, things change in ways that you don't even know. You'll never get credit for it. It just changes. You start realizing things are different. Things are different. In fact, things are changing so interestingly I'm able now to advise people who are in certain projects to make very bold statements of prediction that won't come true but for another year in advance. And why do I do that? Because you're setting the example that you can essentially predict the future and all you're predicting is the law that everyone's going to come to see at the future point. And we do that now when we find a capitulation and some resistance that happened before. And that capitulation's going to be it runs like a slow molasses in the winter and it will finally come to the to fruition in a year and so you make your claim and foundation now and when it comes up in a year then you are giving yourself the credibility 
that that was lost up between now and then, and now your position is much stronger. You don't do that arrogantly. But this is where our influence starts to show this. When they people start to finally, you finally see capitulation in the direction of the law, and they're not there yet, you can predict the law will be fulfilled. And I'm not saying for you, any of you that would do that, you do it for the one who is actually on the front end of it. If you're helping somebody else, like it's in a seat, seat of decision, some commissioner, some rule maker, whatever, whoever that is, some policy maker, you advise them what's going on and you say, you can go ahead and make this statement now. In a year, you'll be shown right. Why? It's not because we're so arrogant. It's because the law requires it and you're only forcing everybody that have been on the agenda who looked away from the law to have to face the law. That's all I try to tell you to do. This is not an opinion. This is a whole society decided to be lemmings and did the lemmings leap and jump the hyperbolic determination of determination of the lemmings leap, the big arc that happens when you just jump off a cliff? That's what society did. And we're asking a few of the lemmings, don't jump, look at this. It's not so unusual what's happening when you stay here on the land and don't jump and buy into the to the to the carnival ride that they're offering to be so fun and warm and fuzzy. Cash of society is being run by the finances. The the regulation of of pot is being run by the um, been run by big big business behind the scenes and the attorneys. I, I discussed all this before, uh, but so here we have someone else now. Finally, it took a couple of years to come back, so, uh, come out, and someone's seeing this story. I'm not going to read it more. Uh, what they uh, the the decision discussion that they go through on this about how they're funneling you in through getting rid of your ATMs to remove the cash to make it easier to use the, the digital whatever it is cards whatever the, the computers your phone is the method how they destroy everything in you no matter where you go you want to take the same method uh, they take out an ATM so you can't get cash you know you make it, they make it easier for you to do digital is how they get the bikes that you force the bikes by constraining uh, the roads to use bikes and add an advantage to buy, to cars and it makes it so difficult that you end up just thinking I, maybe I should just get my bike or I should take their bus it's the same thing. I mean, it's the same uh, carrot and stick thing. They got us over a barrel, and it, it, all that stops when you understand the underlying foundation of, of what they violated in order to do that. And if nothing else, then it, you get to impart that in the plan, and then it ends up showing that the plan couldn't go where it went to do what it's done. In other words, there's no favoritism that can be made on the road when you understand the underlying road right. What am I talking about? But you have to then go into the processes of the administrative imposition and shut it all down the way you're supposed to shut it down, not with a sign and a screaming and a yelling. You point out exactly where they failed relative to the foundation and the law. You have to know that then. And then I get all the, the law, it doesn't help, it doesn't exist. That's because you don't insist on it. That's pretty much simple that, that way. Because when we insist on it, it's now changing things. But it's like a big, this big ship of state. You don't, and you got this little oar, a canoe oar for a rudder is what we do. That's what we are. Well, it takes a long time to turn a big ship like that with a little bitty uh, canoe oar. But it does eventually turn. The more of you having oars in the water that would help on that point, we'd be turning this ship pretty quick. And astonishingly, once the momentum goes to change, it does start to change pretty quick. By then, though, more people are seeing it, and then you're getting more people come. As we've heard the old analogies, you know, when the first uh, the first guy that talks about it, he's a he's a heretic, a lunatic, and then after everyone sees it, now you know they're they're the ones that are the heroes in picking up the problem. He gets that that idea goes away. Uh, that that singular position's no longer no longer uh, a unique. And all we're asking is the uniqueness is what caused us to be good in the country and help us to be that way. Not what you're finding out through things like instead of stopping the, the opioid problem by stop prescribing the darn things. No, no, we're going to go sniff your, your septic system and then blame you if we find anything. I, I mean, the whole thing is so backwards. It's it, We accept it. It's, no one's really talking about it. So this big wanted to point out something about this uh, this gentleman finding out how they how they funnel you down and change you your habits over time 
and then they blame you for it, and they, they hasten it uh, even further and faster, and you just end up going along with it because you didn't set up your parallel, like I would say, your, your silver coin. That's property, folks. That's why, it, why it's so important to do that. That's property. It came from the land. It always maintains that status of being from the land in a production, not a commerce. And I keep talking about all this. There's a big chasm between the fabricated legal or commerce system and the production system. One's tied to the land, and one is tied to, to fabrication. Uh, but this big server in the cloud that they're moving everything to, relative to that, cash does not crash, was part of this article. His statement was that cash doesn't crash, as if that would be saving the issue, that you have to go to cash. But remember, cash is a subverted uh, medium as well. And so I wanted to remind you here how far away we're moved we are that the uh, big server in the cloud, which is what this, these digital these companies are utilizing for digital currencies and and control, uh, it, it the cash didn't doesn't crash. But remember, they went from gold to silver to cash, and now they're trying to get you into the cloud. So I'm asking, do you see a pattern? Do you see a pattern how they debase your the value in your life? To the big server, the big BS in the cloud, it could crash, and cash can't, but cash is a crashed condition, isn't it? Because we didn't maintain as a society the things of property. And when we abandon the things of property, I, I suggest that we would have become either property or subject to someone else's rule about the agreements and presumptions they've imposed upon us. And I just said that to some of you, does that sound familiar? Some of you may not, some of you will. Some of you will make up stories about that. So here we have a digital world, a digital tackable lifestyle. I'm going to move on to a new st another point of this. Uh, there's things that you can do, and you better do is the, the uh, public service announcement. If you have a car fob, an electronic car fob is how your life gets hacked everywhere and people take advantage, uh, you might want to consider putting tinfoil around it because thieves can interrogate that key, f the electronic key fob for your electronic doors on your cars and then send that through another device, a retransmitter, to open the doors in your car and drive away with it. So you have the choice to leave your keys by the door uh, wherever you have them and, and have the first device pick up and interrogate your key to get the code. Or you can stick it in a, in a metal box, which I would suggest probably uh, as good, and uh, then it, it blocks it out. It has a blocking effect. Or stick aluminum foil around your key fob. It's that little thing that you push your button on when you have the newer cars, and it unlocks your door. Well, that thing sends out a code, and that can be read, and it can be used by someone outside. It takes two people, and it takes a device to do, two devices to do it. But apparently, it's so successful that the, there tens of thousands of cars are being ripped off in the UK, as far as the report was here. So, this is how you get into the digital world, and how people will you they just they're just parasite parasitically live off your life, makes your life miserable. There's not much in this digital big server cloud system that is uh, something that you really want to uh, want to embrace. And when I finally hear see people not embracing it so well, I think maybe we'll we'll start to turn that big ship of state from it. And part of that is that their only only their legal system will be dealing in it. You'll have a, a parallel system as I keep saying. You won't have to worry about the ATMs or whether or not it's digital or not. You'll stop utilizing those things that they've extorted and coerced you into utilizing digital. So I don't need your service. I'll figure it out some other way to make it myself. Now you say, oh, well, I can't go off grid. Well, that's those. That's just an ignorance of the law. Because I can see how you could simply go off grid because there's no, there's no jurisdiction in the government to interfere with your property rights if you know what you're talking about. I don't know if anybody appreciated, appreciates that. Like in the Florida, oh, you can't go off grid. Well, let me show me the title that said when I when I had a piece of property that the evidence of which is to be forever what it says and excludes that authority that tries to interfere. And that I can point that out as I, I point out almost I talk about it almost every broadcast that interposition by the official, not the government, but the official in the government using the color of the authority of that government to interfere is a felony. I think we have now kind of made the picture a little bit, we, we've framed the condition a little bit more accurate to show that these governmental impositions uh, for doing that against your property rights to be self-reliant are a crime. 
And when we get more people understanding that and actually putting that forward, I think it becomes more acceptable. But a couple of people in the wilderness talking about this stuff, it becomes pretty easy to deal with. They just ignore you, if nothing else. And so everyone can complain against me and say against what I'm telling you, but every time you do that, you're it's one less of you that's jumping into the point of the foundation of the law, utilizing and saying, oh, where's the law? It's right here. And you, the, the official, had no right to trans, transgress it. In fact, when you did, it was a crime, one of the highest crimes. So, we have a digital world, it's, it's taking over, uh, they utilize this digital world and all their machines and their monitoring, they, uh, that, that leaves people open because everyone wants to believe we're goodwill among men, but you look around and there's a bunch of criminals running around trying to take advantage of each other. So, reality is beyond, is not my will in the world, certainly. The reality is something a whole lot darker. Now, I don't have to feed into that, but I don't have to feed it either. So I can try and live my life in light and life and love, uh, but I have to take the reality that what, what's out there wants to take me out or continue to harm me over so so much time and slowly eat my substance over time. It's not just me, it's all of you too. We have requirements that get failed. We have things that don't continue. We don't walk watch closely how that is supposed to be. We don't insist on the remedies, and so those remedies, those things that we need, are just not done. And when there's no nobody to insist, there's no accountability. And the machine starts to take on its own a character of its own. It's as if it is its own AI self programming to what garbage was put in because no one looked at all the error correction that didn't get put into the system and didn't and stopped functioning in this digital world they put in this technocratic world they're forcing us into there's no error correction and the error correction that was supposed to be wasn't imposed we have evidence of that the United States government this is where places where it hurts you folks I guess is the point to my, to my mind United States government exposed for 30 years, it broke the law on vaccine safety. So it took 30 years before someone like John Rappaport and someone, whoever he, all the information he got to be able to tell you, and this came through, I guess, the people that started to find it was Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Dell Bigtree on the Vaxxed film, and they did a FOIA, and it took them 30 years to find out there was a requirement for a report that never got filed every year, and Congress didn't insist on it. And so I hear lots of people complaining and this and that. And, oh, they're so knowledgeable about the harm that vaccines cause. When in fact, there was no system of control that may have bring some, brought some moderation that nobody used. And this is only a story to us right now. We still don't know, know if someone's going to take on this baton and run it down where it need, in the race it needs to be put in and go after the people that were supposed to insist and have something come out of this. All we see now is the report that 30 years ago, nobody noticed these reports never got filed. And so what what happens? Well, the, the cat's away, the mice will play, right? And so these, these reports that are now harming, that didn't go in, contributed to the harm of the people that are being harmed. And uh, that, that, I think, uh, there was a vaccine report I found. It's just a current one. I just happened to run across it. Looking at, I don't know why this stuff comes around the way it does. Looking at something totally different, I notice in in some results, some search results, this little document, and it's the 2018 report for uh, vaccine injury compensation. A very uh, pretty interesting. I didn't I didn't do the analysis too much more than to look at the charts and see how much the vaccine injury values are going up all the time. How many attorneys, are, how many less attorneys there are that are doing it. How much the injuries are going up. It seemed to me this was a valuable uh, piece of piece of current information coming from the government to show that there is harm. Together with the product data sheet, I can't see how this is not, and then they're not reporting on this, which will, may have limited the type of harm they're imposing, these people that, that are sitting inside the system imposing upon you the same method of technocratic, digital regulation, regulatory destruction, imp imposing upon you the bottom line of the of the corporation's 
uh, to continue this thing under the color of a, a pro- police property uh, ought to be a statement that you can make and you bring this, these documents and these proofs to them. Where were you, Mr. Representative? Do I care that he's really, to me, not a representative? No, but I can impose that because that's what they claim that they are. Don't you think it's important to be that this report, that you were looking, that you should have been looking that this report got filed, and why were you when you didn't notice it 30 years ago, Mr. 30 years sitting in the office uh, representative or senator? What good are you? Now you start beating on them a bit. You have some credibility, not just because it's your opinion that they're no good. No, you know, you say, no, you set up, you set this requirement, and you never went and backtracked it. And this is get back to the miners. I keep telling you about the patent. The patent uh, was, uh, they don't fund, the, the Congress doesn't patent. It's a breach to, the, to their own grant. We haven't had enough people to get together to be able to make that argument. That was number three on the list of five of ten things that I started ten years ago to get work out that I thought the first one would be done in the first year. Ten, fifteen years later, we still don't got the first one done uh, at all, and there's not enough people to come together to help work it out. And so these harms continue. Is that because of what I want? No, I just don't have that much time in my life to do all that. I need help. We all need the help. Now, we are our own help. That ain't going to happen in the chat rooms. It's not going to happen on the Internet. It's not going to happen in the Twitter. It's not going to happen in mine. It's not going to happen anywhere that we just send information back and forth. It's going to happen when you take some of this information and your, I mean, the, the, the great insight I hear from people when I watch this stuff is, is pretty impressive. And then it disappointed that it doesn't go any further than watching it go vaporize into the social, so-called social media. I watch people make discussions. I say, if you are just to line that out in a complaint or a comment or whatever you need to do, whatever vehicle it ends up being, and put that in the right place, you're going to start the process of putting the stick in the spokes that stops that nonsense. And I can get very few people to do even that much. So you got a national, I got a, a link to a, a tweet that I put out uh, to show this, uh, na- this injury report. Like I said, interesting. There's harms, folks. And tied, tied together with this report that was going on, you're seeing we aren't insisting on the accountability. The people in the offices are not counting on the, uh, the accountability they asserted. And I think that's a much better attack than just calling them names. You failed your fiduciary duty where you knew because you created the law that required the report to not go back and insist on that report. And now we've got 30 years of harm that's gone because of that. And it took the people to go find it out. Didn't think that you be, wouldn't be doing that. We we had, we trusted you. You've breached the trust, haven't you? See, we got a much better foundational statement here to step in, and it's not calling anybody names. It's just not making wild, making wild allegations, which I hear lots of people able to do, just because they got nothing else to say. I I, I don't know why we do that to each other. You see, when I say that, there's no. If I was to say that. I don't know of anybody that had any brains or wasn't a psychopath that could answer that, that breach. And when you're in that position and you cannot be addressed, and you don't, again, on the point of the foundation of, of, the, of, the, of the right, of the, raw, of the thing that's supposed to be done, you, there's nobody that can assail that. Nobody. And that becomes the law. That, the law becomes itself, if you will, self-evident. And you quiet Everybody around that that's not on that point. It may take a while for that to happen. It may take a while for everyone to kick the, kick the clods off their shoes while they're figuring out how to get your trust back and start doing something right. And they may misstep to try and make it look like they're doing something, and you got to catch that too. And that takes time. But you're certainly sitting in a much better position than just to complain about it. How bad it is. Look at how, always pointing out how bad things are and doing nothing to, to, to fix it. I mean, we could do that. We'll do that till we're dead. I mean, that's because that's how, that's how they win. It's that simple. They win because we don't do and figure out things to do. They win because the checks and balances are kicked out uh, of the, of the system that's already known in the system. This is the thing I don't get about, like, for us. Why do you, you, I hear some people who know exactly what's supposed to happen. Why aren't you insisting on it? Why do you, you find these other rabbit trails to go down and just do nothing with the information that you knew originally was the thing to do? I don't, I don't understand that. And to me, that just tells me that you may be read, but you're not well enough read. 
And you may think you know, but you really don't know. And this is what, again, getting back to the point where you tell people, uh, this, you need to contact, let's say, on this problem, you've got to contact the Secretary of State. And everybody looks at you and says, why do we get to contact the Secretary of State? That makes no sense. Well, no, you have to contact the Secretary of State. That's how this is supposed to work. And they deny you and they fight you. And then a letter comes from the governor and says, why don't you contact the Secretary of State? It's our problem. We think we want to know so much, and if someone comes with a different answer, can point it out. You don't want to believe the pointing out of the law, and so you, you fight and don't do. And then when the letter comes, then you have to acknowledge it, and now you feel embarrassed because you were pressing the thing you thought was the correct thing, and then you still don't respond and act in the right direction. You don't pick that up and go. So we find lots of excuses not to go do things, not to utilize the checks and balances in the law. And on checks and balances, I find it very interesting. The government has checks and balances. It has statements that it makes, and then it goes and violates it, and we stay crickets to all that. But, uh, again, to me, that's the that's how they do – that's done, and that gives you your in, taking away our our ability to have an excuse over it. This happened again in the, in the news about there seems to be an interesting problem being developing over something. Uh, and, again, it's uh, just to point – I think these things are out in the world to point us – this is wrong, and, and, and this is right, and if you don't go against wrong, you see how much terrible, how terrible, uh, how much terror it actually puts on the world. Getting over to, there's a, re a thing that the United States claims that it doesn't want you to do, it's not supposed to do, all of its policy says it's not supposed to do it, and yet it turns around and supports an entity that's doing all that. And there's essentially going to be no check and balance on any of that, even though the law, the policies, say you, they, that there's no justification for this. We heard that again this this last week uh, with the, the statement. And if anybody, I have the link uh, for the YouTube. You can hear it for yourself. And if you had any doubts about where this uh, entity, this thing called uh, Israel today, the Israelis, uh, where their origins are really from, you'll hear the historic moment in history stated that the modern origins are in Zionism coming right out of Netanyahu's right out of Netanyahu's mouth. This is a historic moment in history of Zionism. In the history of Zionism. He doesn't talk about the Bible, doesn't talk about the the, the Israelites, doesn't talk about any of that stuff. Of Zionism. It's the first thing out of his mouth in a speech right after they put in the bill that gave themselves the right to create an apartheid state and make and kick everybody else out of their state, essentially making a big a st a discrimination state. The evil law, Israel passes Jewish-only national self-determination. Self-determination. Pretty interesting when you look at all this. Who are these people that do the self-determination? And now the reference is, is only to Zionism. Just like I told you behind the woodshed over and over and over was the actual the movement, the political politicization of these, and the utility of, of the other people. They brought in and used more other people, and they used that stocking horse in order to have pushed their agenda. And the people that are being adversely affected are kind of helpless and hopeless about some of this. They're realizing it's the evil law, and they're calling it out. In this video you'll get, you'll see Netanyahu actually give credit to, he says this is the phrase, he says this is a his historic moment in the history of Zionism. Now, I want to, I'm not focusing that, just I want to keep identifying they are going to create an apartheid, they've created an apartheid of self-determination that throws everybody but whomever they want out. What is that, what word envelops that, that act but discrimination? Discrimination. Now, the United States of America is supposed to be the beacon of anti-discrimination, correct? I mean, any one of you that goes and talks about anybody anymore, all this social uh, consequence nonsense, the social equality, which is really not the United States at all, uh, this in inclusion thing, they're even violating that, aren't they? That a self-determination state of Zionists is taken over the land of a people, the Palestinians and the actual Semite peoples, is not a discrimination. I, I think it's kind of a fantastical decision, discussion to, to think about, that they would think it's not a discrimination. 
and that the United States supports that. It has to be a real problem. So, but what did it, to me, I was looking at that, I go, okay, so they're doing a lot that's no good anyway. I mean, they're just, they're just occupiers over there. They're just wanton destroyers. The problem is it's affecting a big region. It's not just a little place that's being affected. And they're getting the United States of America to pay for it all. If it's self-determination, how come the United States of America is paying for it? And if it's self-determination to, dis- to discriminate, how is it lawful? What is, what is this condition? Well, I went back and I looked at discrimination, and it, it pops up, uh, you know, just these concepts. That we were, the United States government, the United States as a country, has, has seen in 1865, the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution abolished slavery. However, the 1870 Jim Crow laws were introduced in the southeastern United States. These laws promoted the idea of separate but equal, meaning that all races are equal, although they should be in a separate locations and use separate facilities. The mixing of races was illegal in most places, such as public schools, public transportation, and eating establishments. These laws increased discrimination. For example, though the intent was to provide separate but equal facilities for all races, African American schools, black black schools were given worse quality teachers, supplies, and buildings than their white counterparts. Water fountains, bathrooms, and park benches were just a few of these areas segregated by whites due to Jim Crow laws. I want to go have you go back to that video when you get the link. And I want you to listen to what Netanyahu says after he says this is an historic moment in the history of Zionism. And tell me if you don't hear that he is saying that he's going to make everybody has equal rights. You tell me if, if I, if you, if, how is self, so-called self-determination of this group of Zionists is not a Jim Crow law. When you hear what he had, the words he has to say as against the discussion that I just read you. Now I want to go over, now he, no, he, they're now imposing, if it was applied because the United States is paying for it, where federal funds are, federal law follows, is a well understood principle in the states. Now we're talking about someone that's, something that's not even a state actually. Oh, they're going to determine that they are, but then what do they do? They cause Jim Crow ish like laws that are discrimination utilizing federal funds to do it because they're not self-sufficient are they and so i go to the united states state state uh, department the state.gov human rights the protection of fundamental human rights is the foundation stone of established the united states of over 200 years ago since then the central goal of the united states foreign policy has been the promotion and respect for human rights as embodied by the united universal declaration of human rights the United States understands that the existence of human rights helps secure peace, deter aggression, promote the rule of law, combat crime, corruption, strengthen democracies, and prevent humanitarian crises. Because the promotion of human rights is, a, is an important national interest, the United States seeks to hold governments accountable to their obligations under human rights for norms and international human rights instruments promote greater respect for human rights, including freedom from torture, freedom of expression, freedom, uh, press freedom, women's rights, children's rights, and the protection of minorities. Promote the rule of law, seek accountability, and change cultures of impunity. Coordinate human rights activities with important allies, including the EU and regional organizations. That's the stated statement about human rights that the United States government is supposed to uphold, and yet it's paying for a, a, a group of people in a political movement to do what appears to be Jim Crow laws of the Southeast uh, during the takeover of the United States of America. It's acknowledged it's federal civil rights laws that prohibit discrimination uh, in, in programs and activities, and they're not supposed to do that where federal funds are being taken. How is this little pipsqueak of a movement, political movement, able to do exactly to the contrary, get along with it, that the United States doesn't shut the door? As I said before, this deception and fraud that this, this movement presents as undercover 
of a legitimate people and a legitimate thing and a historically represented thing that's not is the felony that we're witnessing that the United States government is also turning a blind eye to. And I say to you, if the government is going to turn a blind eye to this, it turns it a blind eye to you when it affects you. And none of us should be any happy about that. Now, I've told you we're so far down that road since I've been going to crickets that I'm, and I'm not going to just go back and reiterate all that again. It's all that, and now we're, now we're bringing up our, what our so-called civil rights truly are, what the government truly has become. And we have allowed it, and we continue to allow it. And we do it in part by our agreement to walk with the ring in the nose that when they offer something or they coerce us or extort from us, we say okay. Oh, we may not like it. We may grumble and gripe, but we essentially do indeed what our lips would would say contrary. We still do indeed what we're told. So I'm not. I'm just a little perplexed. If I didn't even have an, a real deep, deeper discussion on this, I'm perplexed how the funds of the United States can be used in a Zionist movement to make a self-determination claim, the product of which becomes a joke Jim Crow-ish law in that state and and kills people, displaces people, causes chaos is the impetus and excuse for how we're going to go attack more countries, in particular Iran. How we turn the blind eye to Yemeni and the children that are destroyed there and the women that are destroyed there and the women's rights, the, the natives that you were destroyed there, the native Palestinians that are destroyed in the face of a Zionist movement, is all talked against in the official policy. But look at the deed. And that's what's reflecting on the people of the United States of America. This terrible, terrible psychopathy that will say one thing and do completely elsewise. That will say one thing and support completely elsewise. Remember, aiding and abetting a felony is a felony. Uh, these are, like I said, if it was an actual state, it would be war crimes. But we're not doing it that way. And this is the difficult thing about utilizing proxies. They really don't have a status. And so, my view, you have to look back at the one who funds it. In this case, it's Uncle Sam, if you want to give him a little euphemistic uh, familial tone. See, we do that, too, for reasons. Everyone will look away. Oh, it's just Uncle Sam. Must be right. A good uncle. No, this is a this is a criminal. And so, I don't... Out of their lips, folks. I told you, use their words. Uh, I don't have to... Ch I have no... Bone to pick with what Netanyahu said. Out of his mouth, he said it. This is an historic day for the Zionist movement. The first thing he said, folks. So if you had any doubts or if you had any opinions, you need to conform them to what he said. And then that brought up my idea, well, then how is this self-determination to the destruction of another people not a, essentially, we can equate it to the, the, the style of Jim Crow law in the Deep South that everybody seems to find abhorrent otherwise, right? We changed all that, didn't we? Well, apparently not. And I think this blindness that we have and this lack of uh, ability to uh, consider that we need to do something about it, however that is and however feeble it looks it is, is indicative of why, well, why I come here every week to tell you there's a way we got to get involved, folks. We got things to do. I don't know if I can solve the thing in the, the Zionist movement, what it's done in Israel, in, in, in the Palestine, but I can start locally. I can start affecting the things that I can affect. That 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 I can do, and I'm asking you to consider what that is for you. How how and then you know so. You get, just get over to. You have to be able to identify and isolate different classes of people, don't you? And, and don't underestimate the central focus that I've pointed out to you in the digital realm for Israel and all the technology that we're being uh, abused with today because of, of is the Israelis. 
Again, I, I, there's just a weapon of war, it seems to me. How do they identify these classes so that they can say, oh, you're in and you're out? And look at the, what, what, what kind of stupidity is this ultimately? We want to get behind, oh, they were persecuted during World War II by Hitler. They declare war on Germany, and now they get in protection after destroying Germany. They still get the protection. Now they impose the very same thing that they claimed Hitler was doing to them on other people. When did that stop making sense to you? And if it doesn't not make sense, I think you need to do some research and need to come to new conclusions. And I need you to listen to this Netanyahu dude and tell he's telling you something. And that's something that he's telling you is the thing that you are suffering under, and it's not has nothing to do with the Israelis. It has to do with Uncle Sam. And then go look at your civil rights again. And again, I can re-bring re, re all that back up. I don't think I need to. And what really happened when Lincoln, Lincoln, only a lawyer, what they did, what he did to this country, and what you all accepted. This is long before all of us, but we accepted that, and we continue to hold on to it. We'll complain about this stuff, but we'll never start to work against it. I say never because I'm not seeing it. You can change my mind. Say, say, tell me, change my mind that people will never stand up. Would you please? How are they going to identify people? It's in the same tool that they, I keep telling you to be careful of the silent weapons quiet war. It hits the news the same week. Twitter revelation, if it's a revelation. Metadata can identify even secret users with 96.7% accuracy. So when you watch, you start applying all these technologies and all your inputs and everything you confess and you admit and you consent to and all these things that are going on. And you start tying it to the example of that some so-called self-determinant body of political movement can gain the power that it has to get the most powerful nation in the world to pay for that abuse. You don't think that the payer, the, the one who's paying for that, isn't, isn't abusing himself or itself. Uh, and it doesn't have its tools in place to identify the classes it will need in this class of society, which was an illusion, to identify the classes of people that will be subject, no different than the Palestinians and the people in Gaza. I keep telling you, the America is just an open-air prison, just bigger than Gaza. You just don't see it. They got it planned a little different. You don't see the prison you live in. You don't see the legalities around how this works. I've been telling it to you all the time. Yeah, some of you talk about it, but you don't understand how it's working. These social networks can identify through just the metadata the whoever it is that thinks that they're cute and, and hiding when they want you. These tools will be used to isolate you, no different than you hear going on now in, in, in uh, the Israelis doing, to create a self-determined state, the purpose of which is to do that. Isolate people away from a central control system. I mean, I sit, I sit here thinking, why isn't that an example of truth that we have to now take really important interest in to work out how do we address it? Why, why do other things become more important? Why do we allow other things to become more important? It's so it's so integrated, the identification, the anticipation, the prediction of the future. It's like this pre-crime stuff, leading you by the nose. We see the example of a of a, mo a political movement able to do this now, right in the world. It's there for us to see, and big money to pay for it to happen, right underneath everybody's nose, and no one says nobody says anything about that. No, they grumble about other things, you know, trade wars and all this other stuff. They prove they can identify you. They prove the future is going to be that of, of segregation, utilizing this technology. And then you get a story like this where they start you start feeling like oh, it's deja vu. They're there before you get there. They're there in the actions of your friends. And you start picking it up, whether you do it like this guy or it takes a physical cognizance, you actually see it, or, or subliminally, digital ads are starting to feel psychic. Let me read a little bit of this here. Earlier this year, my friend Max gave me a knife from Japan as a gift. That evening, I was lying in bed looking at Instagram. 
I scrolled past an ad on what looked like exactly the same knife. I did a double take, got out of bed, retrieved the knife from the kitchen, and compared it to the one on my screen. It was a perfect match. Masamoto KS. I hadn't Googled the knife, taken a picture of it, or even sent a text about it. The only interaction I had about the knife for it was face-to-face -face with Max when he gave it to me. This felt like more than a coincidence. It felt like I was being listened to. And I'll let you read the rest of this little observation this gentleman has done. They're there before you get there. They're there in anticipation of when you get there. They're there with a plan about what they're going to do about that condition. And they're there to guide you so that you wide guide yourself. The, the slave, the best slave is the one that doesn't know they're a slave. It is evidenced in all these reports, these so-called news, news articles, and our, our communication with ourselves through this Internet are telling us that the plan that they have is working. They get it to make it sound like it's normal. Pretty soon you're going to believe them when they tell you you're the criminal. And you will be. Because you won't be part of the class that's protected anymore. You just slipped outside the bounds. And we didn't need you to say anything more than you, you just set up an account that gave us enough metadata on your communications to do so. Oh, besides, we went and we felt we we went to the sewer and we 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 were testing the sewer water. You're an addict, because we say so. Can I see those tests? No, because the private company you're not you can't get the private tests. But that's what we rely on. They're the experts. I hope any of you that have been looking into the agency comments and uh, uh, appreciate that point. The world is already in the problem. We don't see it yet. I see it, but I, beyond hope, I'm hoping you all start stepping up. That you understand this mechanism, this trick, and it's happening to us all the time. It's throughout the world. Throughout the world, folks. I see it. it I, really, I have to ask myself, am I, you know, it's not a paranoia. I know that. I'm not afraid of it. But I see it everywhere. I can't help not see it. And you have to wonder, when you see it everywhere, you know, 100% of something it may become a problem. Everyone makes a mistake once. But but within the context of what I'm talking about, you can identify it 100% of the time. It's everywhere that it is. And that's where I'm saying you can see these rudiments everywhere. And people are participating in it, and they don't even have an understanding about that participation. This is really probably the scariest part, actually. That I have to come here 10 years to tell you and tell you and talk to you and do all this, and I'm, again, not a judgment to any of you, that it doesn't cause us to actually become a formidable force is really a, a self-evident proof of how well controlled we are, notwithstanding our statement contrary to that, our belief that we're not. Again, they make it so easy to go in the direction that they're planning it. They take away stuff and say, you asked for it. You're sitting there, but I didn't ask for it. Well, others have. You see the herd mentality that they use, even if it's non-existent? They get you to believe whatever they get you to believe. The only way you can stop that is to stop believing fairy tales. The only way I know that is you better, we better step back to an objective basis. That turns out to be things in writing. Otherwise... And, I, and certain things that can't be changed in writing also, because the Internet's one big changeable belief system. It's one big changeable amounts of information. It's really fascinating. I, I don't have the name. What's the name? Um, uh, the Mandela? Is that the Mandela effect? You, you think something's changed? Well, no, but it's changeable. So you don't know. We don't know anything. There's lots of stuff I look out in the world and say, well, I thought this was a little bit different. I thought I learned it a little bit different. Well, you might have. And they might be telling, now promoting a different way. Oh, that's changeable. And you don't even have a sense of foundation anymore. When you you take away, you put put yourself on the shifting sands, folks. They tell us stay off the shift. Found a, a solid foundation. Do not build on the on the sands of, a foundation of sand. Right? They tell us that the internet's nothing but a big sand pile. And so we can keep we can keep feeding into that. I use it as a tool, but I it, it's a it's a, 
a lot of qualification for how I use it. Like I said, I can go through, I can trust certain things. I can trust that the enemy's going, the government's going to, the uh, the agenda, uh, the the planners are are going to tell me the truth because that's what they do. I can rely on all that. Doesn't mean I have to believe what they're saying about it. I can understand that it's being used as a weapon against me, but I can believe what they're saying. They're criminals, and they're honest criminals at some point. And and so, I, I, like I said, in five minutes, I can I found on a one complaint the origins of a of a project that caused the complaint on a highway project. I don't have to believe the words I saw on the website, but I can believe that they're telling you that they want you to know that. That's exactly what they want you to think. But it's not what you think it is, it's what they intend. And so we have a whole it's a interesting subtlety about how to do what we're going to do if we ever choose to do it. But I'm telling you up front, all the evidences in the world are here to tell us the entirety of the world is a subtraction of, of deviance. to the point that they will attack nature, even though on one hand they're they're saying nature is what we're protecting. Uh, we're, in this case, this is a little bit of an older story as I get through this. Uh, opposition to breastfeeding resolution by the United States stuns world health officials. Now, wh why would you why would you oppose a natural function? Is a definition. It's self-evident truth. And when you look at what they're talking about underneath it, you realize it's again, from the United States standpoint, this political jurisdiction is about commerce. You look at the documents before the origination of the Constitution of the United States, you can see they're commerce documents. You can see the Treaty of Peace. We were not the, the United States as a, as a nation of people was not the dominant party in that P Treaty of Peace. You will see the origins of why I keep telling you about the bottom line. And the reason why they want to oppose the breastfeeding is because of formula. It's going to potentially interfere with the companies that make baby formula for all the questionable stuff that that is. But there's no nat there's no support of nature actually, and so it's you know shocking in a way. You just watch, these are people doing this, right? The United States opposes a resolution to promote breastfeeding in the world in order to help help children. Again, they want to protect children. Remember, the State Department says they want to protect women's rights and children. Now they oppose breastfeeding? For what? A corporation's profits? Oh, they'll have other reasons, but this, who cares? I mean, at some point, why did, you even, why did they even have an opinion? Is a self-evident proof if you want to start to look at that because you have to understand that not that they, they the position they took the method the thing that that they're using to come up with that decision my, my response to that is that they probably these american officials probably didn't get breastfed uh, breastfed enough they stunted growth and this is your officials these are the people these are the people making decisions for you and as I say that, don't you think it's odd? When I told we're talking to you back in the 2010 or 29, whatever it was, and all of a sudden those batch of sec whatever security bills, food security, housing security, you know, health security, all those security bills, isn't it? Don't you think it's odd that er, since then that the housing, more people are homeless? Most time you look at, look at media monarchy's got the food world, food world order. Always got a some kind of a bacteria that's coming in your food, listeria, vibriosis, uh, salmonella, whatever, whatever. All since then, do you think that's by accident that when these policies came in, that now you're having trouble in those areas under the cover of doing better to help, and it gets worse? I warned you of those then. And today, I'm wondering, I, I don't even know if, if washing my lettuce is enough anymore. Scrub on the outside of a melon. When did we ever do this? And other things, I mean, go on and on. I don't even want to, I don't even think about it. I mean, you, you know it. Anybody who's read knows this stuff. If you don't, then you may not live very long. You're going to be a victim of the statistician, I suppose. 
But breastfeeding, folks, why would you oppose breastfeeding? Even the world health officials are astonished, stunned about this one. Inside that story are truths that you need to look at. When you oppose it, when you when you present the, the the mirror of the State Department's website versus the interposition of the obstruction of nature, and then tie it to well, that's a baby's rights, that's a woman's rights, that's life's rights, that's nature's necessities, I should say, and they oppose it. Something's not right, and that is your in. That's where you go in, right there, to stop this stuff. Because they can't defend both positions. They can try to mealy-mouth them, but they can't defend them. And wherever you find a place they can't defend it is where you jump in. That's the one statement you make. This, this, I guess, so that's the technique I'm trying to point out through this process. First of all, you attack, why do you attack nature? Why do you attack women? Why do you attack kids? Why do you attack the, the, the natural process? Why do you attack health ultimately? And their answer will come up and they say, well, why don't you address that as the problem instead of attacking these women and their, and their, and their babies through the breast? That's how they hurt you. This is indicative of how they hurt you in other areas. It's a lie that's, again, told long enough that you start believing it. You buy into the lie. Who are they to even talk about that? In other words, get it, let's put it back into context of the same example. What warrant in law do you have to even talk about a woman, her breast, her feeding, her her, her, her little one, her offspring? What, 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 what authority? That you then condition it by your, di di your diktat. You steal that right because you believe you have authority to interfere. That's a felony, folks, right on its face if you frame it that way. You hand the right to the third party, the company making infant formula, notwithstanding its questionability or not. That's a felony, folks. That's a felony. I just defined it again. How? Why don't more people do it like this? Why do you go off on all these tangents and either just complain about oh, how nasty it all is, or you go off and say, I'm going to find this next legal silver bullet? No, just hit them right between the eyes. Who the heck are you talking about? Who, what's your right to talk about it, let alone actually put force and effect to interfere? I'm not talking the government here. I'm talking about those that made that statement. Men and women made that a front. That's one thing I notice people want to do. A dear friend of mine wants to do the same thing. Let's involve the state. No, I don't. Want, I just want to involve the men and women that are violating under the color of the state. I don't have to worry about their office and immunities and sovereignties or whatever all this other fictional nonsense is. So who? So we see here the state is not the government is not be, a, 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 not um, embarrassed to interfere with nature. At the same time, it tries to say it wants to protect it in other places. That's another anomaly. That is on this this thing of nature. These things of nature is this other. If they're going to attack nutrition underneath the color of health sovereignty or health security or the police power, they're going to f attack it in other places. And they're going to attack all other natural things, aren't they? So it's not a now, a, it's now not a question why. They just will. I don't even need to know why. I just know they will. And it's in another area we find in this, not just nutrition as a baby and coming and growing up in a healthy capacity and being forced to go do s s a surrogate food feed for the bottom line. We have cannabis could boost the immune system and fight cancer comes out the same week or a week later. Actually, it's a week later. Those of you that find it important to yourself, and I've told you how to address this and what, where to jump in multiple times, you now see that the United States government will oppose nature 
It doesn't make any, it's not even a question they're going to oppose plants. But the way that system works is you have to throw down their presumption of authority and their assumption of an authority in some third party. So here we have cannabis could boost immune system and fight cancer is a could, but there is a group of scientists now saying this, and it's doing in the UK. And I wanted to point out to you another conundrum that you can now use across the globe. Where is, how is it if science, the best practices they tell you, and best sciences they tell you that they're following, how can best science be different when you cross a body of water? How is it those in the UK, the scientists, are now looking at this, finding that it has benefit in a medical condition, and their only problem with them now is, will that medical conditional help the, the, the purpose that it now brings to the to health and care, will it be misused and gain a wider audience is the only thing the scientists in the UK are now worried about. How is the science showing that this does this this plant can have this effect? How is that different and can it how can it be different than the science across the pond in the United States, that the DEA and the F, whatever, FDA say this is a Schedule One drug and illegal? How is that? One scientist, one group of scientists has to be wrong here. You know, I've talked about compounding the harm that the agency does when it does, when it makes the wrong decision. This is another thing to add upon that. This is not just limited to cannabis. This is how you do all this other, all these things that they're making regulations and causing harm for the bottom line ultimately. As I mentioned, the 5G, what half of the argument is about autonomous cars. They don't even exist. Oh, they exist as little trinkets running around the road causing damage. But they don't exist as a fully functioning system that's the known system to know what the system is going to have to be to, to, that they set up in 5G would be a, a one at least one point I'd hit. Same thing here. If you have scientists in one part of the world, I suppose they're reputable, saying that no, this this plant can be used for medical purposes, and across the a, a vast expanse of water, another group of scientists says no. I think we have we have our in. What have I said? You take your authority, so called your authority, even the one that's being relied upon by the governments to make these decisions, the agencies, and you face them off against each other. Okay, enough enough there. This story is pretty interesting. They go through their findings. You could go line item these things out. You say these are findings for the scientists in the UK, and the UK problem is not one of use more than how widespread the use and for what purpose. But we've already found out that the United States will go against nature literal nature and go against you and you, a healthy you by going after your mother and her decision to feed you from her breast. Uh, you can expect a fight on the nature of, of the creation to give a product and a, a plant, not a product, but a plant that would help you in the ills of the world. Coming, folks. <laughs> the publication is Anti-Tumoral Actions of Cannabinoids. For those of you that want to do facts instead of opinions, just because it feels so good or because what's the problem of a, well, you know, you can't outlaw a plant. Well, yes, they can, and they are. They're legalizing it or illegalizing it, and that's the problem. They will now, you now see they will go and attack nature itself. And you're going to have to come with a more formidable position, and I and I, I know when you do, you will ha you will sound so much better, and you will be beyond doubt the authority, not the authority the authority, that the authority cannot overwhelm and overcome. So here's some more evidence if you want to take it on. I'm, I'm wanting somebody, somebody to do it uh, for yourself. Prescribed cannabis, UK faces issue of diverted weed spreading. So the UK is identifying that it does have a medical effect, and their scientists, again, you'll see this over and over, the scientists say, scientists, scientists say, and then they say scientists are concerned. They're looking very carefully at the diverted weed spreads and its utility. Now, why would that even be a concern? I'm not going to go into the argument there. 
Why would that be a concern? If it's a cannabis, if cannabis is a treatment in one area to, for health, why would they be concerned that people continue to use it for those that, that people themselves determine unless that government knows that you're their property? You're a subject to that authority. And I say authority because it'll hurt you. Okay? So, why, look at, you can, you can fall in right there too, right on that point. What's their purpose? What's their interest to worry? If it does help in one area and they haven't studied it in other areas, what's to not say it helps in other areas? Maybe they should be more focused on finding out where, how far it could spread so that everybody can take immediately, immediate benefit where they find it does work instead of saying, oh, we're only going to constrain it to this one thing we have found. Understand that's an alternative I just offered you to offer as an alternative. When they're looking for alternative, offer that one. Why do you constrain it to known uses that you denied before when you're worried about spread? Why don't you go find out the spread? Tell me what this stuff can do. Maybe I've got an affliction. I need it now. You, that's how you help me. No, partly, why would we want to do that? So we have access to a plant. We have, and I say do it to the production side. Forget this, this, this commerce side nonsense. But what happens in prohibition? What happens they try to constrain the scope of how this plant could actually help people, the comprehensive nature of it? Oh, this diversion of it. Well, it's not diverted at all, actually. People decide they want to use it, they want to use it. What can I say? If that's what helps them in life and makes them more, more content in life, why not? What's the real problem here? I mean, at some point, you're not doing nothing anyway, right? So who cares that we're all laid back and have a big smile on our face while they're funneling us into the technocratic future and classifying us? Who cares? Give us give us what we need to make us cope. You think they want to do that, but see, they fight nature. <laughs> they even fight the nature they're bringing on. What do people do when they can't get stuff? You heard about the black market, the dead black market. We hear about the facts of things going on that really are the, the, the seriously harmful things that go on. You, you stop abortion, women will have an abortion, uh, but it's not a good thing. Uh, you stop alcohol, people will make alcohol. And then you have all the, the, the big business around stopping it, and you have all the big business around the black market that develops it, and people still use it, and it gets worse because now it becomes a thing to go do because i got to find some excitement in my life. That we now see where, as I want to point out this thing, what do you do when you bring your facts and what the scientists say it has a use? The other side is what happens when you keep people from using it? You keep them from it because now your scientists are worried about this diverted weed. Well, that's a prohibition in another term against some particular thing, and they don't know anything about it. They tell us they don't know anything about it. What happens in the United States? People will make what they will and sell it to people because people are that dumb. That we find a story today, FDA issues warning about synthetic marijuana tainted with rat poison sickens hundreds. So when you when you keep the plant away from people, they're going to go look for an alternative, even if it isn't. And that is subject to being con, uh, tainted, is subject to adulteration. But as you know, it's not going to be it's not going to be lab standard. FDA issues a warning of synthetic marijuana tainted with rat poison. People are dying over this. At least one person in Illinois has died with synthetic marijuana, and doctors say it was because of because of rat poison, according to the Chicago Tribune. Uh, you, again, you can read all this stuff about what they're doing. This rat poison is the same thing that you give uh, that makes their uh, the tissue, the cells bust and burst, and then they bleed to death. Uh, there was stories before, weeks and weeks ago, where people had their they were bleeding from their eyes because of the same stuff. This is that Spice K2 and AK47. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, keep using it, because people are too stupid not to use it. But it's also because it's driven by the state trying to uh, keep you safe, secure, and healthy. To keep you from nature. I don't think that people would be going off to the synthetic. I don't think that many people truly want to be zombies and bleed from their eyes and their mouth and wherever else uh, if they were have access to the real the plant that actually helps them. But this is the cause, the other side cause for, con, for in prohibition, constraint, or worry about the divergent use that we hear that's happening in the, in the UK. And then I got this reminder, because uh, this, kind of, this one actually kind of shocked me. As I sa I've said this before. 
you think of people growing marijuana, you think that you know it's green plants, healthy, all this other stuff. You think they do the healthy things, but remember, it's just a plant. It just becomes a product. It's a farm product. What do they do to keep bugs off but use herbicides? I found out that herbicide use for pot is way worse than you'd ever think about the vegetables you think you're worried about. All the stuff they use to because marijuana, nature loves marijuana apparently. Hemp, whatever you want, whatever, whatever, whatever family it is. And so they use lots of chemicals and it's not regulated. I was shocked at what people will do when they try to go to produce for money. And you start to overgrow. You start to grow too tight. You start to do things that are more, again, commerce related. And I'm reminded by uh, of that in one of the tweet responses from Normalization of Ignorance. Uh, Real-time reports of Canada marijuana given to patients here in Canada show a wide range of bad product, including fungal infected, which in itself is hyper-deadly to breathing states, as well as uh, they are scripting like Prozac. So he wants to re reminded me in reading that. Uh, you prohibit or, or focus a commercialized governmental supply and you will invite the adulteration of the nature of the plant as well through its overproduction. And this gets us back to just my thought. Leave it alone. Let it grow. If you want to grow it, you grow it. Stop getting into this legalization and regulation of pro uh, for profit around this plant. Stop trying to make uh, promote the formula companies in this regard to uh, avoid the mother and what the mother can do and the synthetic milk you know that uh, that would come out of a commerce regulated condition and this brought up another concept not only when you do legalize it then you want to make the profit because now you're being regulated and there's a profit behind it and you've got pressure coming from the outside to limit it and that's a prohibition in those areas so the black market will stay around because of that and this actually came up and this is what I always wanted to point out on this in this aspect about misinterpreting what you're seeing gives us a wrong idea and will make us act wrong and not look at the things I talk about that I think are the Achilles heels worked against the system that wants to harm you like I said, you got one scientist on one side of the ocean, another scientist say, uh, saying one thing, and you have on the other side, they're saying an opposite thing. They, one of them has to be wrong, or they're both wrong. I mean, there, there can't be both being right. And this is kind of how the prohibition works. You want to not make a prohibition in one area, but you prohibit in the other by the same point. You're going to create uh, the, the market, if you will, for that which you have deprived as, an org as a regulatory body. And this came out in a in a statement in a in a Twitter, and I had to respond to it. I did respond to it. I'll tell it to you here. Uh, the misinterpretation, at least the way I can see this, as I told you about the legalization problem at all. Stop decriminalizing it because that just makes it criminal with with criminal charges, and stop legalizing because that just regulates it into control. It comes out. The comment was: cops complain about a black market. That wouldn't be there if the state would just legalize. See, and this is the fact. He makes a good comment because, I don't know if you know this, the cops are complaining about black market around legalized pot. Why does the black market exist? Because there's a prohibition about it otherwise. Outside of the legalization, there's a prohibition. Those prohibitions will create markets. But his complaint here is the cops complain about the black market that wouldn't be there if the state would just legalize how many states do you know that legalize it that understand that the black market that they're trying to protect against is every one I know. And so the misinterpretation of this legalization potential, trying to argue for the legalization without understanding the dynamic, leads us to a wrong answer here. And my response was the black market continues because of legalization. Legalization is registered crime. Decriminalization is forced crime. Stop criminalizing plants at all, everywhere. No crime, no black market. So we need to stop fraudulently treating cannabis as a business when it's actually production. It's actually nature. It's going to have to find a neutrality. It's going to find its level somewhere, ever. But as soon as you start to either decriminalize it to allow the system to criminalize you to some extent, which is a prohibition 
otherwise. Or legalize it where you register yourself to be underneath a set of rules, which then now brings up the ones that are not. And the lack of costs, too. You create, you self-inflicted when you create these problems by the government getting involved. So legalization is, doesn't fix the black market problem. It actually causes the black market problem. Again, it continues it, actually. It continues it because either legalization or decriminalization is this, is like opposite sides of the same coin. And so here's the point about looking very clearly at something to be able to come up with a better answer than what we, we tend to tell ourselves in the social set, in the social media memes that people pick up and just keep regurgitating that are not actually proper. And that is planned. I, I'm, I'm certain that's planned. They want people to do that so that you stay off point. You don't want to. Li- they don't want people to hear something that I would have to say. I get lost in the in the noise. You know, it's really kind of fascinating. I say some. I think. Well, I say some foundational things. All the a lot. And I only have a couple hundred people that follow that. And a lot of people, I've probably lost five, ten times that. They come and they go away. That's social media. I don't have the problem of people coming and listening. They don't stick around. They don't listen. I hear people have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of of viewers. They get tens of thousands of responses. And I look at the stuff and I say, but that's all wrong. That's all messed up. That's, that's That's a misinterpretation. Not necessarily on this gentleman here, but... In fact, got quite a bit of responses, but uh, the point was where there is a where we need to be taking a better look, we aren't, and the people that are in government count on that. And I come again every week to try and explain this condition, so we get focused on better things, focused on responding better. In lack of response, we lose. Wrong response, we're going to lose again. Arguing about how we're being harmed about something that they've done that this that you get pushed under the under the bridge because they've claimed the higher uh, standard of well we're helping the public. What you have to show is that that help was a fraud. That what you're say, saying in, in in print is not being out indeed like the Israeli problem where you fund in the minimum. I'm, uh, maybe I trivialize, I trivialize it. A Jim Jim Crow state in 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 the self determination of a Zionist movement. Folks, think about that. Really put that together. It stopped making sense as soon as I finished saying it. And yet it exists. For all you all think, oh, fiction, it's a straw man. Yeah, yeah, there's one right there, and it's killing people. How's that? And part of this is because we look at all this incorrectly. We look at the, we see the evidence of the problem, and we don't utilize it to our power. We don't find the objective basis to, to stand on, and then we don't find those that are around trying to pull their agenda that, that caused the questions to themselves, like scientists on one side of the pond, scientists on the other, coming to two determina- different determinations. Who wins there, folks? Well, who wins? Whoever has the problem and doesn't assert the problem will lose. I'll just put it that way. Who would win will be the one that says, listen, you got a real problem here, but nature says it works. And here, this action by the breastfeeding that you're opposition shows that you're against nature. And so you already have a conflict of interest. You don't really truly intend to help people and uh, give health security at all. The only health security is the health of your corporations and their bottom line. That's a fraud what you're doing. How's that, folks? Why don't you say that? We all know it. Why don't you put it down in writing and, and enforce it? So our misinterpretation of legalization causes us to come up with funny ideas and we tell that to other people. No, I didn't get many responses. I didn't get any response to that. There's no acknowledgement, actually that legalization causes black markets. That's not my idea. That's just accepting what the officials around in places that I've heard have the legalization happening. They all have a problem with black markets. And you go, why? Because legalization is registration. It's a prohibition of, uh, of, of a certain nature. Decriminalization is a different side of the same coin. Government's still imposing a standard. And now it's criminal side. Not, not agency side, but criminal side. It create that interference causes black markets. Your whole life is one one big conundrum like this, but I don't see why, and I don't see why people don't see it. But 
I'm trying to point out this so that you see something. Hopefully, you'll start to say, "Oh yeah, that's right. That's what that. That's what that's looking like." How am I? How am I going? That's interesting. How am I going to deal with that? How am I going to take that and apply it so I can defeat this nonsense? Is the question I have to leave to you and hope that you do answer that in a in a in a way that gets you involved, to take action. FDA, they make decisions, all these experts, where they have a problem. See, you got to look at the, where the problem goes. And inside the problem gives an opportunity, if you want to, just to make a statement. It doesn't even have to be a big deal. It just it could actually be a joke. In this case, I'm wondering if not a joke. It's serious stuff. What I'm saying is that you don't have to take on the, the deep answers here, the deep problems. You could take on lighter ones. I've been asking you to do that. That's where I want you to start. So there's no threat. I don't, I don't talk. I'm not in jeopardy whenever I do the stuff I do and talk about what you, I'm talking to you about. None of the guys I work with are in jeopardy. We simply bring the law, we bring the foundation, we f we find the logic that works better than the, the rationale that works better than their agenda, and subject and and consistent with law and purpose and intent of the official bodies that claim to be that. F uh, lab. So this is here's one of those uh, those uh, those conundrums that's being developed by the government itself. Get one, uh, they're, they're turf war in a way. Lab grown meat, FDA versus the USDA. FDA held a public meeting last week. Did you go, folks? Did you listen in? Did you get the tape? Did you get the paperwork? Did you send in a comment? No, nope, I don't think you did. Uh, FDA held a public meeting last week. A, a lab grown meat, in quotes, quote, meat, meaning in FDA speak, quote, foods produced using animal cell culture technology. Foods produced using animal cell culture technology. At issue, basic questions about transparency, marketing, environmental sustainability. That was offered by the friends of the earth. They're the enemies of the people, but they're the friends of the earth. Again, remember the governments, which these this association has given license to be born into and uh, function, are could care less about nature. The primary evidence is uh, that they'll attack their mother and the breast uh, milk uh, and the feeding, the uh, breastfeeding. Uh, no, okay, go on. Uh, safety, the safety of these products is, was on the list. Can these products be called meat? Which agency, FDA or USDA, should regulate them and decide such questions? You think maybe the USDA should have been invited here and there should have been like some cooper some coordination going on? With with uh, the, the the governments that would be affected by this, I'm talking about the state governments. You think they should have had all that before they brought it to comment? Well, I think they should have. That's what the law would require. No, the FDA does an ex parte hearing. I guess they can ask the USDA to come in and and, and plead their case. Which agency should regulate? The FDA announcement of the meeting. FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb's statement staked FDA's territory over these products. Pretty fascinating. Turf war. Love them. The FDA has a long history of ensuring food safety and applying a statutory framework while supporting rapidly evolving areas of technology and innovation in food. The agency is cur uh, currently evaluates microbial, algal, and fungal cells generated by large-scale culture and used as direct food ingredients. The agency administers safety assessment programs for a broad array of food ingredients, including foods derived from genetically engineered plants, and also manages safety issues associated with cell culture technology in therapeutic settings. But if these foods are meat, then the USDA is responsible for their regulation. And the USDA puts out their turf uh, declaration. According to federal law, meat and poultry inspections are the sole purview of USDA, so we expect any product marketed as meat to be USDA's responsibility. We look forward to working with FDA as we engage the public on this issue. Well, that engagement is already a predetermined outcome. I'll just tell you that right up front. The point here is that they're having a turf war over who gets to control the regulation and inspection of it. They're actually talking about two different things here. What I'm trying to point out to you is that this is a regulatory thing you can jump into. It only is going to, if you help and you do the right thing and say the right thing and offer, offer the, the, the thing that needs to be said that's not going to be the outcome but is responsive, is foundational, you could be the one that without jeopardy jumps in and makes the help and helps this determination and possibly averts this lab grown meat on your, 
in your food system, the feed system they're creating. So lab-grown meat, they, they've said that they want to call it that instead of culture, cell-cultured meat. But I, in thinking about this, I, I've said it. In fact, I put out a Twitter uh, for the balls to the wall on Friday with Grimner talking about me, meeting, meeting the culture that's tougher than yogurt. Uh, I had made another comment about this. They talk about cell cultures. That's how yogurt's made. So is this is this simply this lab grown meat simply a yogurt that's just tougher? Is that can that be considered meat? I'm not so sure. I don't care who takes it on. So pointing out what this stuff really is may be part of the clue, part of the key on getting it ultimately to be recognized for what it is than what they want to call it. Because you see, that's the legalization, the dumbing down process. They call it anything they want. Now they've got it to the point where now they can actually put in genetically modified organisms in your food without having to label them. If you're not interested in that, fine. But if you are, and you want to be given disclosure up front in the future, this little meeting was held for you, and it's going to continue, it's not over yet, about who's going to decide and on what terms. You could have a contribution for that. And then we can make it a hobby. This is nothing that's really killer. The only thing that's going to happen is the food will be killer eventually. It'll be feed. They will limit you down to your soylent green. It'll be a cultured process, project, won't it? So I want to go on record right now, and I don't think that tough meat-flavored yogurt should be awarded a meat label. How's that? that I would, if I was going to get interested in that, that's a comment I would make. I, I don't. That's my my suggestion not to do that. Because all, if you're talking about ingredients coming together to make up a cultured product, it's just a cultured product. It's not the natural thing we know, right? It's not actually in all the conditional parts that we know when you've process something, you strip out something. There's a prohibition against all the things of nature there, right? And they don't care about nature, so you've got to understand that too. I guess why I bring this up. So this question though, remember they talked about something, about being food safety. That question is not a food safety concern, isn't it? So the jurisdiction may not be in the FDA at all. It has nothing to do with food safety unless they're questioning that it might not be. And there you go. You got both sides of the coin, you open the door, now you got now they got it. Now they have to go find the answer, right? And so you can prolong this nonsense until you get a better handle on it. For you, you no big threat. You get a better you get to research the field a little bit longer. You get your you got it you got your irons in the fire and you get to manage those. You get to eventually be you now have standing to go make that argument if it was nice and foundational. Right. The jurisdiction wasn't in, in the FDA to make this decision. The USDA doesn't have this decision. So it's a waste of money and time right here, what they're doing. Because ultimately you're talking about tough meat-flavored yogurt. And that's not really a product. That's not named as a product, so we can't deal with it on that level either. A truth, a truth on the label, this is tough meat-flavored yogurt. It's not lab-cultured meat. Let me see that lab. No, no, it ends up being a big production facility. See, that's not a lab. So it's a lie up front. So there's another, you start looking at the reality of what's going on, you can start identifying all the stupidity behind the name calling that they want to get around because what are they doing? They're denying nature and they're going to promote the bottom line. And the best they can get it to you, they, if they can sell it to you and you buy in and you buy it, you start consuming it, then they make a product, everything's cool. They got your consent. They got your silence, they got your consent. It's not, you know, it's not meat. It may be chemicals that are put together that make some meat-like substance, but that was like in the 1970s. I noticed cheese food would hit the labels. I go, what's cheese food? Is it something you feed your cheese? It's not cheese. It's cheese food. What is this stuff? It was some processed stuff. It was some culture. It wasn't the real thing. But this is your whole life. You want to talk about straw men. There's a straw food. It's fictional food. It's all processed out. It's food-like substance. And they give it a nice little word. And you could be part of a, a, a group of people writing simple little letters to get stick, sticks uh, in the spokes. And you get used to how to interfere with what the government wants to do 
in the future for your little ones as they strip, uh, they, they cut all the breasts off the women in the protection of their rights and then uh, feed them formula because now the, the government, because uh, you want it that way and the government has the right uh, to, to sanction those uh, formula making companies because it's cultured food, folks. It's not real breast milk, but it functions like it. And whatever else they want to throw in that food, if you kind of see the processing point here. So FDA talks about ingredients. USDA says, but it comes from a source. Neither one of which on the question of the meat is a food safety problem, unless they're questioning whether cell cultures are non-safe. And that's, I'd go in on that one too. I think that that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> If you're making the question as to its safety and its need to be regulated, why? Maybe we don't want it. Maybe there's no need to name something as an ingredient that, notwithstanding that you do algal, fungal cultures, bacterial fung additions to our food, some are perfectly fine. We do, we, we use them all. We've used them forever and ever, naturally. Meat's not one of them, though. Or, as I would maybe say, toughened meat-flavored yogurt. That's a cultured product, isn't it? It's like our money, the, the, the Sacagawea is the golden coin. Not a gold coin, golden coin. Add a couple little letters on the end of that, makes a little difference, right? Same thing here, tough meat-flavored yogurt. I think it's pretty well indicative of what it is. Call it out, folks. Be the be someone who wrote that letter. Put it down there. Let them see. I, it would be a. I'd laugh just to see the answer. Just to have the even if it was le, legitimate answer, I'd like to see the answer. That would be a, that'd be a nice nice running joke. How are they going to answer that? What do they say? How much more do they stuff their foot down their throat? Anyway, the point is is that we're not helpless, and it doesn't have to be difficult. It could be. It could be kind of fun in a way, but it's on serious things. And we start learning how this government does this thing. The people in government do it. As I, like I was reading here, I just found on YouTube, meeting cultures, meeting the cultures tougher than yogurt was something I tweeted out to help tell people that Balls of the Wall was playing. Meeting is M-E-A-T-I-N-G. Meeting the cultures tougher than yogurt. What, is it meat, folks? Is this even a real condition? Why is there a turf war? <laughs> What's so important about this? And I think you'll see as you start going, that this is the, the method of justification for the invented things of, of the government. It continues to give the authority, authority. Notwithstanding, you heard the FDA make the claim that its oversight is on these genetically modified things, uh, materials, ingredients, and the processes. Now we have a start statement. You, I guess we wait long enough, someone will be studying it. Potential CRISPR damage has been seriously underestimated, study finds. So this damage I was telling you that's there, we, that they don't answer to, someone else has found it. And now it's not me, it's not some guy behind a woodshed. This is a actual a respectable study. It says that the, the damage is seriously underestimated. If that is, if you read this report and you see that where the FDA wants to be proud to take on the able, ability to make cult tougher than uh, meat, uh, toughened yogurt, meat flavored toughened yogurt, a uh, meat, you can now point out, but wait a minute, you also said you do GMOs in their processes. And now we see some seriously underestimated harms. Maybe you, you, you're derelict in your past duty and you're not worthy. It would be a whole different attack. But this is what starts, you want to start making a turf war, gives you the opening to start saying, yeah, but we can start cutting the knees out from both of them as we work this through. I'm not so worried about the USDA and the meat side as I am the FDA making, making uh, more stories up for us and not looking at what I told you. It just a basic look at this technology would tell you we're going to have problems. Maybe not anybody that's seen science since the 2000s, but for those of us that got science well before that, there was basic problems, and we were told about some of those when it was still an up-and-coming wondrous thing on our on our horizon. 
the scientists were looking and saying, wait, it, but, but wait, here's the, here's the things they're going to have to work out. Well, they never did. And you see how the process is arranged so they don't have to, is what I'm telling you you have to address, otherwise we're going to have all these seriously underestimated genetic damage going on in these cultured processed foods and therapies and, chemi and chemistries and chemicals and pharma and all this other stuff. And then we have the, another proof that they, the experts can still be wrong. And I guess this is to throw the whole thing up in the salad up in the air and say, how can you regulate when you don't know the basics? You still don't know the basics. and you, So you're making up all this stuff. Not, and you're not supposed to be doing that because you're supposed to be protecting against harms. If you're not protecting against harms, you're not within your state police, your police power. Change of heart? Why Australians could be wasting money on fish oil pills. Okay, so now we go, this is like the eggs are no good to eat, and then they are so good to eat, whatever. Cholesterol is high, now it's not high, whatever. Here's another one, now they're telling your fish oil. Now, and very specific in this case, I found, they repeat it over and over and over. They found a study of studies, and it's supposed to be a well-regarded study here. For those of you that were taking your fish oil because you were told it's healthy for your heart or cardiovascular health or whatever, they're finding that the studies show pretty consistent pretty decisively, it does nothing for cardiovascular health. Now, I've told you, I take vitamin, uh, I mean fish oil, and I also, but I also take some other things together because they work synergistically together, not by themselves. That's not discussed in this study either, but I don't take it for heart health. That was going to be a side product if that was the fact. I take it for another reason, and it has an effect. That's why I tell you, if you don't see an effect, maybe it doesn't work for you that way. I take it for some other reason. So for me, this is just means that if this is true, the the health hard, uh, the healthy heart side of that wasn't going to be an additional benefit to why I take it. But they're saying that if you're taking it for that, maybe you're taking too much. But remember, the title said Australians. So I want to know why why wouldn't this be for everybody? First of all, but secondly, they, if you read down far enough, it does say that the vitamin E does uh, omega threes do do something. It's just not in the heart. And this study doesn't look for any of that. So that shows me. Our question is, well, why are these studies so confined that they don't start looking like I suggested the marijuana? Don't reconstrain it because it might divert from what you think you see as a benefit, like an anti-cancer, anti-tumor effect. Why don't you start studying it to find out what it does do? Give me the widespread, the wide comprehensive view. Why don't you do that in the fish oil? Why is it I can take fish oil for what I want and it works, otherwise I wouldn't take it? And yet you come out and try and dismiss it, that it won't do this one thing. And yet, at the end of the story, you say, you admit in the story, not you, but the, the story, the, the report, admits it does do something as it, hel the, it helps the energy of the cell. Uh, the gestation period of babies. And made them healthier. And so while it comes out and it says it's not, not good for the health of the heart, it's also going to help your body, your as a mother, aid the baby. What do you think that that may also aid the breast milk? Because they found also studies that come after the birth that the babies are more healthy. So this uh, this study shows and focuses on heart health, but it doesn't do anything else. Grimner, thank you very much for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.